Hey guys, it's Ryan Price, another episode of the Wing Crew Podcast. We're super happy to have Vanessa Stovall with us today. Vanessa's been in the industry for quite some time. She came from the teaching world, um, decided it was time to make a leap. She came over to the crew, instant success story. Um, what I love about Vanessa is she's very fashionable and she really has an eye for design too, which she incorporates into her amazing social media presence, which is why I'm super excited to have her today. Um, so hopefully we can help. Um, our listeners learn how to have a similar social media presence. So thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ryan. Um, we're going to go over a lot today, but, you know, in real estate, it is super important to be present on social media. Definitely. Um, one of the free ways that we can get out in front of people, whether it's um, trying to let people know who we are, what our business is about, maybe the homes that we have listed or things, uh, tips and tools we have for buyers. So we're going to touch on a lot of that today. But um just getting going when you did come over to the crew, when you uh, came into a different career, what was the first thing you did to kind of reintroduce yourself on social media as no longer a teacher, but now you're Vanessa, the real estate agent? Yeah, definitely. So as soon as I came over to the crew, I made sure that I got the word out on social media that I had made that um, career change and that I was in real estate now. Um, just sharing that with my friends and family and anybody that might be interested in, in possibly using me or following my um, story or transition. I definitely wanted to, a big part of that too, was I wanted to share that, hey, you can make a change in your life as well. Um, I did this for many years and now I'm doing real estate and I, I wanted to make sure that that was a part of my story too. Yeah. And that's super important. I mean, it's, just, it's just kind of a scary time in life, especially I'm going to say being a grown up, um, <laughs> deciding to make like a career change mm -hmm. and especially one that, you know, doesn't involve like a biweekly paycheck, like a W2 sure. and you know, none of us were born into real estate. We all had to make that decision to come from more of a corporate world or teaching world or whatever that is. Um, and you use social media to kind of share that story along with your, with your real estate. Right. I think that's, that's amazing. So what were some of the first things that you did from a real estate standpoint, um, to kind of help get your business out there? Sure. So, um, you know, of course with the crew, we, we share all of our listings. That was one of the biggest thing. Um, anything that I was doing with, um, clients, I was making sure I was sharing that on social media. So whether that was, I remember I even looked back through some of um, my highlights last night on Instagram and just looking back at some of those, um, it was kind of funny to see just the beginning of everything. And it might've seemed like a really small thing to share, but it was big to me because it was new to me. Um, so even if I was just going on a showing, sharing that with, with um, people that followed me, um, you know, of course, sharing all of the listings that we have, but before I started having listings, just, you know, sharing what I was doing with my buyers, sharing what I was doing to work on um, my real estate career and how I was learning and growing. I think that that was um, really helpful in just being transparent about my process in getting started. Yeah. So what was that, what was that transition like? Were you, were you <laughs> like, were you out there on social media prior to becoming an agent? Definitely. I, I definitely was. Um, but I will say I am a lot more involved in social media now. I mean, it's required for my job. And, you know, previously, if you were a teacher and you were on social media at your job, that was definitely a no, no, you weren't supposed to be doing that. Right. But now um, with real estate, if I'm on social media for my job, well, that's a good thing because I need to be doing that. Yeah. So that evolution from kind of day one, putting yourself out there as a real estate agent, talk about Talk about some things that you've changed or how that that presence has evolved over the past several years being in the industry. Right. So I think the main thing um, that I've noticed in myself from before I was in real estate until now is that I'm a lot more comfortable with sharing uh, my life on social media. And I know that that's something that a lot of people um, just in general getting into real estate, uh, they might be nervous about, you know, social media. And it is a requirement pretty much to be successful right. um, with real estate. You have to be on social media. It's a non-negotiable. Um, but I definitely uh, second guess myself a lot more before sharing something on social media before, especially um, whenever I was teaching. Um, but now that I'm in real estate, I'm a lot more comfortable sharing um, the bits and pieces of my day, um, sharing, you know, just anything that I think people might want to, to see that has something to do with my job or even, you know, personal life as well. Because I think in general, people like to know what we're doing. I mean, sure. I, I like to see what people are doing in their day-to-day -day lives. And I, you know, I think the other people, you know, have 
hopefully enjoyed seeing that aspect of me and, and changing from being a lot more private to a little bit more public. Yeah. It's hard for a lot of people to turn the camera around on themselves. Um, especially me, I, I always <laughs> say my phone does not have selfie mode. Um, but it, yeah, it, it is hard, but I think that kind of, as you mentioned, the more you do it and the repetition, you're mm-hmm. going to get more comfortable. And I think the more comfortable you are, then the more, um, the more appealing your content can be as well. Sure. So you mentioned Instagram is, is there a platform that you use more than another, or is there something that you know, you, if you post on Instagram, is it directly going to Facebook? Do you use Twitter? What are some other avenues or just means of social media that you're using? Sure. So I would say my favorite um, social media platform is definitely Instagram. Um, I probably use it the most. I would spend the most time on it, you know, actually, um, you know, looking at content, um, getting ideas. And then, of course, second, um, well, Let's say this. I spend a lot of time on TikTok, but I don't spend a lot of time posting on TikTok. Okay. I haven't made it to that point yet, but that's a goal this year for sure is to uh, film more reels, um, more TikToks and, and get those out there. Um, so I definitely have some goals there as well. And then, of course, I think everybody, you know, has their Facebook account. You know, I, I share um, the same things I share on Instagram um, and Facebook. But of course, your your audience is going to be different on those two platforms as yeah. well. So you um, you can kind of double up there just knowing you might get a different response. I've heard statistics too that you know people are more inclined to click on or watch a video rather than just a post. Right. So do you feel like Instagram is just is that the platform that allows you to do that much more easily? Is yeah, it- I would say so. I mean, I think that, you know, we know that that it does seem like the videos are performing um, a lot better than just a static post. I, I'll be honest, I love static posts. I, you know, I save a lot of them. Um, and I think there's a lot of people that do still really like those as well. But, you know, in order to keep up, we have to, of course, be doing the videos. But I think definitely, I think that Instagram is probably kind of the best of both worlds for yeah. sure. So I mentioned uh, kind of in, in the intro, I love, I love when you show um, content about home decor and mm-hmm. things like that. So yes, it is real estate related. No, it's not necessarily highlighting a specific property. Right. So what made you want to incorporate that? And can I tell me about how that's had an influence in your social media life? Definitely. So that's in a roundabout way. That is kind of how I got into real estate in the first place. I've always loved um, all things home, all things design, whether it's, you know, clothing, fashion, um, and home decor. And so in thinking about making that transition to real estate, I thought, okay, well, I, I really love design. I really love homes. You know, let's get people in homes for sure. Let's sell homes. Um, and so that was, you know, definitely all encompassing there. So when I decided to make the transition to real estate, um, I wanted to make sure that I was sharing a passion of mine. So home decor design um, is definitely a passion of mine. And I think that people that follow me for that might also, you know, they're going to have my trust a little bit more whenever it comes to those kinds of things. Um, If they like my style, then they're going to make that connection with me. And that might in turn help me in the real estate side of things. So how do you know, like if, if something you're posting is resonating, I mean, are you going off of, Hey, X many, X amount of people commented, X Mm -hmm. amount of people liked it. So talk about the hits and misses when it comes to, Hey, this, made an impact on somebody sure. and maybe it didn't I need to move on. Yeah, definitely. So I definitely look at, at all of those things. Um, you know, I do post a lot of stories because it's an easy, quick thing to do. And like I kind of mentioned before, I think people just like to know what we're doing. I like to know what people are doing throughout their day to day life. It's quick. It's easy. It doesn't take a whole lot of, of time. So I definitely always go back there and look at views. Um, you know, that really helps me understand, okay, is this something that people are liking? Is this something that people aren't really liking? And, um, you know, if I'm getting a lot of uh, feedback, comments, that's definitely going to help me understand, is this something that I need to keep posting? And of course, I'm going to continue um, to post that kind of content. Um, You know, of course, there's always misses that you don't get a lot of feedback on, or you don't get a whole lot of views. And so you, you think, okay, how can I, if I, if this is an important thing for me to share, how do I change this up? How do I share it at a different time of the day possibly? So I'm making sure that I'm getting more, um, more views on this or I'm reaching more people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as a real estate agent, I mean, you're, you're super busy throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Do you use any tools to make sure that you are posting X amount of times a week or once a day or like what, how how do you, how do you build that schedule out and why is it important to to do that if you do? 
Sure. You know, my goal is always to definitely be posting every single day. Um, Some days are busier than others. And so there's less time for posting on social media. One thing that I have noticed with myself personally is, and you you mentioned this earlier, once you get on a roll, then you continue to stay on that roll. Like yesterday was a big post day for me. I remember I had several stories because I just found little pockets of time throughout the day whenever I was doing other things. And I was like, oh, this is something I want to share. This is something I want to make sure I share. Oh, I shared this. So let's go ahead and, and continue on with this. Um, and so I think that that's a big part of it, getting that ball rolling and um, continuing to post even when your day is busy, just making sure you're fitting that in as much as you can. Yeah. Um, but you're also wanting to share quality content as well. Um, not just anything and everything. Yep. So do you ever get stumped and just, cause I mean, I'm, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, a classic overthinker yeah. and many times if I, if I think about posting something for too long, it's just mm-hmm. not going to happen. So yeah. how, how do you determine is this worth it or not? And how much yeah. time does that take you? Yeah, it depends <laughs> on a lot of different things. There's, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to post something and second guess myself and just, you know, hit that X button and, and then not posted it. Um, even though yesterday I posted quite a few stories, there were definitely a couple things that I didn't post because I was like, I'm second guessing myself um, on this. So, and that's one thing I constantly have to overcome with myself is I, nobody's judging me on there. And if you are, I don't know it anyway. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, who cares? Right. Um, but it, it really depends on, you know, how busy I am, what frame of mind I'm in. You know, if I, everybody, you know, nobody wants to be, to be judged. Everybody wants, you know, whatever they're sharing to be well received. Um, but you know, if it's not, then, oh, well, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. So, so that's obviously, you know, one challenge is kind of almost getting past what other people might think about exactly. you on social, because that's really what social media is all about. It I mean, is. you're putting yourself out there. It can be very comfortable for some people, for me again, uh, not, <laughs> not so comfortable. So that's one challenge. What are some other challenges or pitfalls that an agent from, you know, posting as a real estate agent, um, some different challenges they might, might face. Sure. So, you know, I think, you know, if you're a real estate agent in, um, you know, in this market period, you have to be on social media. You, that's just the way you're going to hit as many people as you can and get the word out about your services and what you can provide your listings. Um, all of that. I think that, you have to, you don't, you don't want to be, you don't want to copy anybody. I mean, and and that's really hard because there's so many different people to look up to when you're trying to figure out what you want to do on social media. And so I think you have to make sure that you're taking um, inspiration from others for sure, but you're making it your own. So you've got to find your own little niche and you've got to post the things that are important to you that you can actually speak to. You know, I, I do love fashion. I do love design, um, love home decor organization. I'm a mom. So all of those things I'm really comfortable posting because I'm passionate about them. I care about them a lot. I'm not going to be posting anything about, um, you know, cars. I'm not posting anything (laughs) about football because those are not, you know, those are not the things that I know a lot about. So I think people definitely resonate more with you whenever you're posting things that you're confident and you're passionate about for sure. So you know, just not being like everybody else. I think that's one of the biggest challenges for sure. sure. So when you, when you said, you know, you, you like to hopefully be inspired by other people, mm-hmm. are there certain things that you're searching for or just kind of scrolling and say, Hey, until you're, until you're inspired, are there certain accounts? Are there certain things that, like I mentioned, like you, you put in that search bar and hope mm-hmm. for inspiration that day? So, you know, <laughs> that's one thing I kind of pride myself in is I keep a pretty, like tight follow list on, you know, my, my most, you know, used, um, you know, app is definitely going to be Instagram and I I keep a pretty tight follow list. So if, you know, I am following you and your content is no longer for me, then, you know, I'm going to unfollow. And if that's the case for, for anybody, I mean, I don't want people to feel like they need to follow me just because I want to be relevant to whatever you are interested in, but I have a pretty, um, lengthy list of saved (laughs) posts and I have them organized just like a Pinterest board kind of. And that's one thing that I think that a lot of people don't realize you can do maybe on Instagram. So I find tons and tons of inspiration. That's definitely where I find the majority of my inspiration. So, you know, if I find um, a organization tip that I really love and I want to make sure I can revisit it, I put that in a folder and same thing if I were to find um, a living room that I really, really loved, I would say that. And the reason I do that is because I'm always going to go back and reshare those things. Yep. I really love to reshare 
um, content from people that I follow that I find inspirational. And especially if it does end up, you know, um, working alongside real estate content as well. I mean, that's something I often do is, is share the home decor side along with the real estate side and try to combine those. So that's where I go to that, uh, that saved folder and, and share that content. Yeah. You mentioned Pinterest and that's still a thing. <laughs> it um, is. Yeah. So in what ways could somebody use Pinterest as a real estate agent? Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely still use Pinterest. Um, so when, um, in thinking about like the boards that I have, I definitely have, um, you know, a lot of different pins saved for, you know, different marketing ideas, um, different, you know, staging tips, um, you know, things like that for sure. That's great. Um, social media is trendy, just like everything else. And it's, I feel like it's always evolving. Mm-hmm. So what are some ways listeners can, especially if they're in the real estate industry, help their content evolve with what's going on on social media? What are some, what are some key indicators or factors that, you know, that you're kind of going with the flow mm-hmm. and no, not against. And moving in the right direction. Yeah. So I think that, you know, kind of like what we talked about before, we know that video is getting uh, the majority of the, you know, the algorithm is definitely going to show more videos for sure than, than static posts. So I think that, you know, and, and I'm saying this to myself because <laughs> I'm, you know, I love to watch videos that people share reels, TikToks, um, but I'm not great about making them. It's a little bit overwhelming and I feel like I'm, you know, definitely showing my age, but that's just not what I'm used to. Um, so, you know, I'm definitely speaking to myself here. I need to make sure that I'm keeping up and learning that skill. And I think that, you know, with social media, it, there are different skills that you have to acquire and you have to brush up on, um, and polish in order to stay, stay current. So I definitely say, you know, okay, what are you seeing on social media? If you're seeing these things on social media, well, then you probably need to be doing those things as well. Um, so I definitely think that anybody that's, you know, in the real estate, um, you know, side of things, definitely be paying attention to those, those, those trends and, and try to jump on board, but doing it in your own way, you know, and not copying everybody else. And I know that that's challenging for sure. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's super important. I mean, that's why the people that follow you follow you is because you know, they feel like and you are, you know, you're real about it. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's great advice too. I mean, if I look at all the people that I follow or the things that I'm pushing a like button on, if I'm posting, why not post about, you know, the same things? Because right. obviously it's a passion or something I'm interested exactly. in. Exactly. Um, that's a great avenue. And when we're talking about, let's say, where several years ago when you got into real estate, let's talk about three things that somebody like myself scared to death about social media. What are three like tips that people can take home to say, okay, I'm going to start, this is what I'm going to do, and this is where I want to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. So three tip t- uh, tips to just like get going. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned earlier, if you are somebody that is nervous about it and you know you won't do it, if you if you don't like remind yourself, set yourself a calendar, put it on your to-do list. Um, you know, if you talk to Siri, some people love to talk to Siri on their phone. I'm one of them. <laughs> some people don't. Hey, Siri, remind me to post on social media in an hour. You know, yeah. um, and if you can, if you can um, remind yourself and if you can be consistent trying to do that every single day, then it becomes a habit, you yeah. know. And so making sure that you're doing that um, every day, if at all possible, multiple times a day, if, if, you know, if you feel up for it, but just trying to stick to a schedule and stay consistent, um, share things that you are excited about, share things that you are passionate about, because then the people that are also passionate about those things will follow you. And then you will be able to form some kind of connection. And I think that's what we all want, right? I mean, if, if I'm working with a real estate agent, if I'm working, um, you know, with any kind of professional, if I have anything, something in common with them, then that helps break the ice because whatever, you know, this, this process is definitely going to be new to a lot of clients that we're working with. And so if we can have some kind of common ground to talk about and break the ice, that's going to be helpful for everybody involved. Um, and then I would say, you know, don't get discouraged if just because you don't know how, just because you don't know how to do something doesn't mean you can't learn. I mean, and I, again, saying this to myself, the reels thing is something that I need to be working on. It is a little bit overwhelming. I started to dive into it a little bit the other day and I was like, oh, this isn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, so don't get discouraged. Give your, you know, if you can just make a little bit of progress every day and learning that new skill, um, then you're on the right track. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Awesome advice for those that are trying to get in social media game um, for real estate. Maybe they want to uh, kind of up their game a little bit, but 
I think there are a lot of nuggets that people can take away from today. So thank awesome. you so much for being here. Guys, uh, make sure you like and subscribe our um, our Wind Crew podcast. You can find us at the Wind Crew Homes um, on all your favorite platforms. Have a great day.